Hey everybody, my name is Aaron and I am the one who wrote this book and I want to talk to you a little bit about why I wrote this and what's inside of it so that if you are interested in buying it, you'll go in a little bit informed and if somebody else is making you buy this for a class or for something, at least you'll know a little bit about what to expect from it when you get it in the mail. So um, first of all, the reason I wrote this book is when I was in school, I really wanted to know about all of my different options when I got into the field of rehab. I knew that I was interested in disability and vocation and counseling and all these kind of things, but I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to apply that and what options I had available to me later on. So as I got out of my master's degree, I went on to a doc program and I said, I'm going to explore the range of possibilities. And I felt like I had a decent understanding of what it meant to go work for the state, but I did not understand what this private rehab stuff was. So I went to some conferences and I started getting involved in the communities. I talked to a bunch of people, and uh, I've now done a bunch of work in these various areas of counseling. And as I started to get into teaching, I had people ask questions like, how do you get into this? What does this mean? How much can I make? And all these things related to the various parts of private rehab. So as I was doing that, I was answering a lot of questions, and I said, okay, I'm just going to write all this stuff down, and hopefully it'll be a helpful resource for people like you, either so I can talk to you more about it specifically, or you can just take the book and you don't have to talk to me. That's even a better solution. <laughs> so nevertheless, uh, that's the intention of writing this. It's supposed to be a helpful resource for you to get started in the world of private rehab, whether that means you're coming out of school or whether that means you're transitioning out of a different area of rehab. The intention is to be a starting place. So it's not like an authoritative text on everything you need to know about each individual topic. It's enough to get started and to find a, a navigation path towards that end. So um, let me show you a little bit about what's in the book. I'm going to get myself out of the way, zoom in a little bit without making everything blue. OK, so there's the title you probably or the, the cover. You probably already saw that from the website or something else. Um, and here's the table of contents. I'm just going to briefly go through some of these pieces. So chapter one is really laying the foundation of what private rehab is. There's a bunch of questions in here that I thought were important for me and questions that I'm hearing from other people in terms of like, what's the difference between a license and a certification? What can it do for you? How long does it take to get it? Who's the authoritative body that gives it to you in terms of like, which ethical code do you follow and stuff like that uh, help you sort out the differences between those two? Because I see quite a bit of confusion in the community about those. Um, what are common licenses or certifications that I might get? Depending on what state you live in, you might have a different license available than at other states. And certifications are generally sort of like a, a blanket thing that says you're qualified and credible to, to know about a certain topic or to perform a certain task or something like that. And generally speaking, they're not region specific. So a license allows you to practice in one state. Certification is generally speaking something you can do over a larger space, either a country or or across the world or something like that. So this goes through some of your options and what might be available depending on the things you're interested in. Um, counseling versus coaching. I hear a lot of questions about that. I'm not gonna go into it right now, but uh, also salary expectations. So that's just a really brief overview uh, about those topics. The next part of this book, I split up into uh, vocation focused, disability focused, and mental health. And the reason I do that, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you a Venn diagram right now. Okay, so if you're looking at this, what you're seeing, and I'll, I'll talk this out for people that can't see it, what you're looking at is a Venn diagram of overlapping circles. In the top, you have uh, a circle that's labeled career. In the bottom left, you have a circle that's rated disability, labeled disability. In the bottom right, you have a, a circle labeled therapy, or you could consider that mental health or counseling or something like that. I wanted, when I started, I wanted to understand the wide scope or the, the whole swath of things that I could do with my credential, or with my educational training, I should say. And what credential I could get depended on sort of where I fall in here. So all of, voc all of rehabilitation counseling or vocational counseling, depending on which title you use, uh, it has something to do with career and disability and mental health counseling. Depending on where you end up, you might do more of one of those things than others. And it really doesn't matter to me about finding a specific place of this job fits this category and this one does that category. 
this is really just a helpful tool for me to envision how do I break up the different kinds of work. So going back up to the table of contents, when I am thinking about, was thinking about all these different occupational options that you might have, what I try to do is split it up into which, which skills uh, or which skills or content areas are people generally going to focus on the most if they do this kind of work? It's really kind of an arbitrary breakdown. So I break it down in vocation, disability, and mental health counseling. But if you think something's under the vocational focus category that should have been disability focused or something, we can split hairs. You can tell me I did it wrong, and that's totally fine. It's really just a way for me to organize, uh, organize the book, uh, not to split hairs. So. As you look through here, there's all kinds of uh, occupational titles that you could use. Social security expert witness, vocational counseling in social programs like state programs, not talking about vocational rehab specifically within a state. I'm talking about like, there's another example here in a different chapter, but like in the foster care system, people with disabilities exist. And therefore, there are certain things that we can know that can contribute to helping families get adjusted to understanding this child with a disability. It's not just about fostering a kid, it's about understanding the unique needs that people with disabilities sometimes have. And so we have training that can help in that space, and this is a place where you can figure out how do I do that, how do I get there? So um, other categories here, uh, working within the VA, there's various ways in which you might do that. Private career counseling, not necessarily focused on disability, but just uh, our career knowledge can help just general population people do career counseling as well. Um, being a general vocational consultant or helping in career centers of various kinds, those are the kind of things that might be available to you. By the way, when I was putting these together, I was interviewing different people who had done these kind of jobs before or currently do them. So it wasn't just I arbitrarily picked these things and said, hey, we could probably do that. <laughs> it was more of like, these are pathways where people have gone to get to the next step, or this is the job they're currently doing, and uh, their rehab training specifically helped them get there. As far as chapter four in disability-focused careers, some of you might be interested in working for an insurance company for people who are on short-term, long-term disability or various kinds of uh, disability insurance. Um, a life care planner is another job that people do. Um, accommodation specialists of various kinds for various different companies, corporations. Um, there's just so much there to unpack. So you have not to, this is not intended to be a, a plug to buy the book, but if you look at the book, there's more explaining what that means in there. Um, disability benefits specialists, specifically in Social Security, but other benefit systems as well. Uh, working in colleges and universities, working with different populations, either the foster care system, which I mentioned earlier, kind of at the, at the beginning stages of the lifespan, and then also working in the elder care industry as an elder care specialist. There's different versions of what we can do with our rehab training there. Um, there's, there's more on the list uh, that I won't go through in detail here, and you can kind of see those as you go. But the last category is sort of that, that other part of the Venn diagram, which is mental health focused career options. Now, you're, there's a lot of people who want to go out and be a therapist and get licensed. And I'm of the mind that having a, the rehab counseling philosophy can really help, especially in those programs that are clinically focused. Or even if you just say, getting a license will help me uh, expand my career options. But if I have that rehab counseling philosophy and I understand dis functional disabilities, both from a physical and a mental perspective, I can bring that rehab philosophy and provide some unique thing that mental health counselors or other social workers, something like that, they just get trained differently and they think differently. And so we have a unique perspective I think we can offer there. So uh, being a therapist, working for an employee assistance program, understanding psychometrics, um, working in university systems, all of these places is wh where our special mental health training could potentially be a benefit. Now, there's a lot more options here that I didn't cover, uh, but I want to keep it focused on typically rehabilitation counseling and vocational focus, specifically talking about disability employment. So if you're a therapist or you're a mental health counselor and you're reading this, my intention is to have something here for you, and there should be something of value in there. Uh, but it's not going to be comprehensive. So just so you know that, that's what the focus is. Um, 
As far as administrative career options, if you care about disability and you care about advocating for people with disabilities, working in compliance offices with regulation, like how do we apply the ADA? How do we care about civil rights and um, equal opportunity? And those kind of things that have really built up the foundation of rehabilitation counseling are options. And for us to know about those, those fields, there's a little bit in here about that kind of stuff. The field of rehab counseling has largely been because of political efforts and at continuing ongoing advocacy for uh, people with disabilities or for people's career options and you know equal opportunities to use the term again. Um, there's a lot of room for that in the rehab world. So I talk about that a little bit. And then of course, research. There's chapter, chapter 10 is about getting into doctoral work. And if you see a life path beyond just going to master's school getting a master's degree in graduate school. If you want to go on, there's a whole bunch in there about what do you actually get with your doctoral degree? And do you actually want a doctoral degree? Is it going to get you the thing you want to get, like get you the job, get you the lifestyle, all that kind of stuff? Um, there's a bunch in there about specifically pursuing higher education. One of the benefits of pursuing higher education, even further than a master's degree, is that you can learn a lot about research and then be able to apply that and, and build a foundation of knowledge that we can all benefit from. So that's an option there too. Another thing that uh, happens a lot in the private rehab world is that people kind of build jobs for themselves. If you live in a community and you see people with disabilities that are underserved in certain ways, maybe not everybody knows how that works or they don't know that there's a person in the community that can provide that service. And so starting your own consulting practice or your own business might be a thing that you do. In fact, a lot of people in the private world, they do that for themselves. They say, I'm going to start a company or I'm going to start my own thing, whether it be consulting or, you know, an official business or whatever. They might start that and then go provide that service that frankly doesn't exist yet. So um, there's a little bit in here about really, really basic business practices and starting up stuff. So. It's not an in-depth explanation of how to do that, but it's a starting place of things to start looking into. Um, professional networks. The associations that uh, provide continuing education credits and develop conferences, they play a very, very, very important role in uh, professional advocacy. And so this explains a little bit of that about if you're going to find work and you wanna get into the private rehab world or some other counseling space, how can you leverage the professional associations, conferences, online events, all those things like member benefits that associations provide? How do you use that stuff to help you get to the next place in your career? So it's a little bit about the unique culture of rehabilitation counseling, a little bit about a guide for how you can go to them and attend them and use them for networking and that kind of stuff. And then lastly, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that you don't learn in graduate school. And this is not meant to be any kind of disparaging comments about educators not doing their jobs. I am one, and I will tell you that very important things are covered in a graduate degree, but it's not everything. Depending on which direction you go in your counseling career, you might need a different skill set than somebody else who goes in a completely opposite direction, and that's okay. They're, you're getting a foundational knowledge in your graduate program, but there may be other things to pick up. And as I've gone out and uh, explored the world of private rehab, I've picked up on all these things that I didn't learn in school, but it wasn't my teacher's fault necessarily. It was just that there wasn't enough time and that wasn't the purpose of school. And I won't go into all the details. I could talk to you until you're blue in the face about my excuses of why I think we're still doing an okay job in education <laughs> and other things about why I think we don't. But nevertheless, there are things you'll want to know about. And so this is kind of a, a list of different parts that I think you'll probably want to pick up some extra education on. Uh, if you're going to break into this world of private rehab. And then, of course, I already mentioned the last chapter is about pursuing an advanced degree. So my intention with this whole project is for you to find something of value in there, depending on, uh, regardless of the direction you're going in the rehab counseling world, or if you're becoming a mental health therapist, but you really want to benefit from serving people with disabilities of certain kinds, the intention is to provide something of value to all of you. It's not meant to be read like a novel from the beginning to the end. You can if you want to. But like many textbooks, which, by the way, I don't like calling it a textbook because I don't like textbooks. <laughs> I didn't want to write just a whole bunch of facts and information for you. 
I, when I was in school, I wanted a mentor. I wanted someone to sort of walk me through the process and, and really humanize the process of finding that job within this community. And that was my intention of writing this, not something super serious, but something informative and valuable. Uh, so it's written for you and me to walk through this together. And if you skip forward to a chapter or you only read a certain portion of it, that's okay. Take what you need, get rid of the rest. That's a totally fine way to read this. So hopefully you find something invaluable in there. Thank you for listening. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you specifically sometime in the future. Um, I know that when I was going through school, I looked at authors and I was like, oh, who is this person somewhere in the world? Do they actually exist? And this is part of the reason why I'm making a video is because I actually exist. I live within the rehab community and I would love to get to know you and whatever your needs are too. So as long as I have time and energy in my life to connect with as many of you as possible, I'd love to do that. Uh, part of the reason I wrote the book is so that you could not have to talk to me, but still have access to this information. So whether you do that or not, or whether you, we connect or not, nah, whatever, that's totally fine. So feel free to uh, find me online in any ways that you need to. And uh, I just want to make sure that we're a stronger community than, than yesterday. So, okay, that's enough for me. Hopefully I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.